after showing you that series of uh, presentations that were um, of varying quality, I decided to take one of the students' presentations from a previous year and simply um, edit it to the extent of my ability. And there were some things I couldn't do to their slides, and there was some information I didn't have, and I'll comment on that. But to give you an example of what I would consider to be an excellent format and content uh, board of directors presentation, and again, the, the guys did, for the most part, beautiful job with their slides, um, that you don't have to try to necessarily replicate that. Uh, but a particular PowerPoint, the way he was able to di display some of the graphs is what I'm trying to say, but you've seen other examples. So uh, you'll see that I have only 10 slides in this, and uh, I will step through. There's just one place where I will kind of say administrative stop. Let me tell you why this isn't the best way to present this information, but I don't have the information that should be presented there, and we will go away to the races. So we'll begin the board of directors presentation now. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of the board. I'm Jeff Stanbaugh. I'm the CEO of the company, and I will be here to talk with you about CT Authority. Welcome to our company and to our board. This is what I'm going to be doing uh, in the presentation today. I'm going to be briefly introducing you to our strategy and to our financial performance. I'm going to spend the majority of our time talking about what we see are the primary reasons we've performed as well as we have, uh, but I have very good news. There's ample reason to believe that our best days are still ahead, and I'll close the presentation with those points. Uh, as I hope you know, uh, there are six total companies competing in this industry, but we are by far the number one com uh, company in terms of stock price and revenue. I'll brief briefly mention Delightful Shoes during the presentation. They did make a good run at us a couple of years ago. Uh, and capitalized on some mistakes we made, but we have now firmly established ourselves in the lead position and think that we are there for the duration. <clears throat> as far as our strategy, when we took over the company, we decided to initiate an integrated cost leadership differentiation strategy. Our thought was to differentiate our shoes by making them very high quality, um, and that, of course, required some trade-offs, and we decided to trade off our product line breadth, and so we reduced our product line from 200 models down to 50 models, hoping that that would allow us to keep our production cost in line. Speaking of production costs, this was a continual focus for us, so we made a conscious decision shortly after taking control of the company to spend tens of millions of dollars in investing uh, in our plants to increase their productivity and also in an uh, investing in our workforce in terms of pay and training, with the overall goal being to lower our cost of production below our peers. We did a use, initially uh, offer some shoes in the private label market. Obviously, this didn't further our brand, but it did keep our plants busy. However, the private label market is very volatile and, and for the most of the past seven years has been a place of very low profitability. So we decided to exit that market initially, although I'll be discussing a change to that strategy uh, at the end. <clears throat> In terms of our financial performance, uh, all of these slides will look similar. The red diamond is CT authority. The blue line represents the industry average for the six companies in our industry. The vertical black lines uh, show the highest performing and the lowest performing. So they give you a sense of the variance within the uh, industry. And you can see initially uh, we stepped out and we basically mirrored the industry average in terms of revenue. In year 14 and onward, we began to really uh, figure things, some things out about our strategy that showed up in our revenue as well as our other elements of financial performance. Now the orange line that you see towards the right side of the slide is delightful shoes. They came out of nowhere in terms of revenue in year 15 and have been close to us in revenue, but as you're going to see on a subsequent slide, really not that close to us in terms of financial performance. However, today we still consider Delightful Shoes to be really our only viable competitor. In terms of stock price, even in the early years when our revenue was around the industry average, uh, because we did have excellent profit margins, we've consistently been rewarded with a high stock price, typically at or near the industry high. Again, as you look over on the right side, you see that um, Delightful Shoes made a real run at us in year 16, and in fact, they eclipsed us in the stock price. This is due to a mistake that we made. You can see we rectified that situation last year. On average, since we have taken over the company, We've improved our stock price by 159%, which translates to an annual 
year-over-year -year improvement of 23%, and you can see that far exceeds the industry average. So we're very proud of what we've done in the past. Let me tell you about how we think uh, we achieved that. First of all, we were striving for that integrated strategy where we kept our cost under control, but we differentiated such that we uh, drew customers to our shoes. So if you look in the uh, chart in the bottom left-hand part where we talk about the quality ratings, and I'm using uh, the North American market. The North American market was representative of all four of our markets. Uh, with some minor exceptions that I'll talk about later. You can see when we took over the company, we differentiated ourselves by going to the very, uh, by being the best quality shoe in the marketplace. You can see we compensated for that in the chart in the bottom right hand side by dropping our models down to the lowest. You're going to see this slide or this trend change as we consistently have increased our models to the point where now we are producing the maximum number of models uh, allowed in the industry. And we have not so much lowered our uh, quality rating, but we have not increased it. We are still above the average, but we're no longer necessarily trying to be the highest in the industry. You can see the net effect of these changes is that over time, our revenue uh, went from being average to clearly above average. So what we realized is in the customers' minds, they valued having this very broad product range. And so as we brought the, the, uh, the product range breadth up by increasing the number of models, you can see that the revenue really took off. And even where we held the product quality uh, the same, revenue continued to increase. So the key learning point out of this is, is we think we've now got a product lineup in terms of SQ rating and model breadth that's extremely attractive to the customers that gives us a lot of pricing power. But this pricing power hasn't come at the expense of very high shoe costs. As I told you, we invested greatly in our plants and in our workforce through TQM and Six Sigma. <clears throat> we also put a high priority on maximizing the utilization ratios of our plants so that they were always operating at uh, peak capacity. And because of that, you can see that we have had the lowest cost of goods sold in the industry, here a minor blip where we were close but not quite the lowest, Again, this is for the North American market, and I'm going to tell you about uh, some subtle differences in the other markets, but this has been a key to our success is we've always been able to produce an above average quality shoe at the lowest price uh, in the industry. In terms of production capacity, we chose to build additional plants in North America, I'm sorry, in Europe, Africa, and in Latin America. What this did was, it, in addition to our existing plants in North America and Asia Pacific, this allowed us to buffer exchange rate risks and also minimize the tariffs. And both of those are, re are reflected in, those, uh, in the cost of goods sold. So by pursuing this very balanced strategy, we felt like we were able to keep our costs low throughout the world. Speaking of plant capacity, we did add, uh, we did both expand our North American Asia Pacific plant, and we did build 1 million shoe capacity plants in Europe, Africa, and Latin America. In the previous slide, I told you why that was a good thing. It minimized our exchange rate risk, and it also uh, decreased our tariffs and our transportation costs. But there were some disadvantages that we were not fully aware of. For one thing, we missed out on some scale advantages that we could have gotten in our existing plants. As we expanded our existing plants, we saw our costs go down significantly, so we realized that we were able to capture a lot of economies of scale by taking our existing plants and making them bigger. And by building those two small plants, we foreclosed that opportunity. Plus, there's a, a lot of expense, uh, fixed cost expense, engaged with having a plant that produces a lot of models. And so by going to four operating plants, we're paying that fixed expense four times over, if you will, for running a very high model strategy. So operating four plants was not consistent with uh, that high model strategy. And frankly, this was a mistake. But we believe the window of opportunity for our competitors to take advantage of that mistake has closed. We are, we've taken our new plants and we have uh, under, we are undertaking upgrades there that will specifically reduce the setup costs of the high number of models. Plus, as our market shares continue to grow and our revenue continues to grow, we now need to increase the capacity in all four plants. And so we'll begin to get that scale in all four plants. 
uh, that we didn't have in some of the early stages. Now, if I can stop parenthetically, uh, I don't have this information, but this would have been a great place to build in a slide showing graphically the uh, introduction of that additional capacity. Also, this would have been a good place to show the advantages that we got, perhaps with another chart, about exchange rate risk and how we minimized some of the exchange rate risk because of our distribution of the factories into all four plants. Okay, let's uh, continue on with the presentation. We've learned a lot about pricing. In fact, a mistake in year 16 caused us to realize that we were probably leaving money on the table throughout. Even though we've been the top performing uh, company, you can see that price-wise, we have kept our prices below the industry average, even though we were offering an above industry average in terms of quality. <clears throat> and so this was a tremendous advantage for us and why we were able to grow our market share uh, so significantly. We decided in year 16 to drop our prices even more <clears throat> in an attempt to build market share. And what we found is we didn't need to do that. And in essence, what we did is we created that opening for delightful shoes to take advantage of us, and this was the dip in price. So even as we dropped our price, we didn't see much of a gain in market share, and we were already producing uh, at scale. And what we became to realize is the demand for our shoes was not as elastic as we thought. So you can see in year 17, for the first time ever, we've actually moved our prices above the industry average, and yet our revenue went up, our market share went up, and obviously our profits soared. Uh, and so we believe in the future, we can actually sustain higher pricing than we have. And that's one of the reasons we feel like better days are still ahead for our company. Uh, I did want to point out in Europe, Africa, for example, the, the penalty of the small plants. You can see that we don't always have the lowest cost per average and that the industry average is closer to us. Now, granted, not everybody has. Uh, and so we have an advantage, but not as great an advantage because the shoes that we're producing in that country aren't as cheap as they will be as we achieve scale. So this is not a great news story, but it's gonna, it's gonna quickly become a great news story as we scale the company. And so how are we gonna go forward? We do believe, particularly with what we understand about the importance of models and demand and that we've perhaps been underpricing our shoes, that years, the future years are gonna be great. We're, we're going to, uh, finish our plant upgrades in Latin America and Europe, Africa this next year, and that will reduce some of the, the fixed costs of the model conversions. We're going to expand the Latin America plant first, and we're gonna do it by a million shoes this year, and then we're gonna expand the Europe, Africa plant by a million shoes in year 19. This additional capacity is gonna give us a chance to re-enter the private label market. Now that we have plants at scale in all four regions, we think we can underprice our rivals. This won't be a great source of profit for us, but it will allow us to cut off any profits that they're making in the private label market. Um, <clears throat> in terms of the risks, we do see that people have noticed our high model strategy and are beginning to copy us. We think we're going to be able to keep them in check, though, by simply responding to the market conditions. If they begin to up their models, then we're simply going to up our shoe quality to maintain our differentiated position. And with our lowest cost of goods sold, we believe we'll be able to hold them at bay. So in sum, these have been a great seven years for CT Authority, but we believe the best is yet to come. So there is uh, what I would consider to be a solid presentation, again, I started out with how we did, and then I uh, gave the quick introduction to the why of what was our basic strategy, and then I picked four specific points to emphasize that drove our strategy. And those four points were uh, the change from uh, quality to models as a differentiator. That was the first driver. The second driver was our cost of goods sold and our investments that have significantly or kept our cost of goods sold down throughout. Our third was our plant capacity, how perhaps this held us back a little bit in some of the years by not keeping our, by not making our cost even lower uh, and the mistake that was made there, but uh, talking about how in the future it was gonna work to our advantage. And then finally, talking about what we've learned in, in pricing. So this is where I specifically talk about why we gave D an opening in year 16, but then what we learned and how we're ready to go forward. And then you can see 
that the summary slide directly comes off of these points. Here's discussions of upgrades and capacity, uh, getting back into the private label market. Not something I talked about at length, but that's really what they need to do, and just what our plans are as people try to follow us up in high models. So I would consider this to be a very good example of what I would like you to uh, portray during your board presentation. Good luck.